Good evening. Welcome to the second part of um, meekness. What is meekness? Having decided what we talked about last time is not meekness, I would like to explore what JC meant by blessed are the meek a bit further with you this evening. JC knew that he was rap rapidly approaching the time when he would be crucified. He'd taught his disciples and shown them the full extent of his love, but still they did not understand exactly what the master was about. And he knew it. <clears throat> he knew that their hearts were full of worldly ambition and that they were joust jostling for positions in the perceived new kingdom that they hoped that he would establish. They had not understood Jesus when he had said, my kingdom is not of this world. Luke 22, 24 to 26 tells us that there was a dispute over who should be considered the greatest in the new kingdom. Let's read it. Luke 22, 24 to 26, the New International Version. <clears throat> a dispute also arose amongst them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest amongst you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. Jesus had sent two disciples on ahead to prepare the upper room for the feast, and even in that room they were arguing, trying to make themselves look better than they really were. Luke 9 tells us that Jesus had given them power and authority. And when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he'd sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, don't take anything for the journey. No stick, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet <clears throat> as a testimony against them. And so the disciples set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. <clears throat> and in Matthew 10, 5 to 8, the New International Version, these 12 disciples Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Jesus commanded them to give as freely as they had received from him. I can just imagine them arguing over who had healed more sick people and who had raised more dead people. It was all about superiority and being the greatest. And in that upper room that night of Passover, there was an awful lot of pride and an awful lot of prejudice and a lot of anger especially as one of the mothers had asked Jesus to grant her two sons the position of being one at his right hand and one at his left in the kingdom he was going to establish. <clears throat> that upper room that night seethed with unrest. Nobody yet nobody was prepared to humble themselves and take on the role of a servant. They were all sitting there with filthy feet. The bowl was there and the towel was there and the jug with the water, but not one of the disciples was prepared to take on the role of the servant and kneel at the feet of each disciple in turn and wash the grime of the dusty dirt roads from between their toes. They were so angry with each other. And we'll carry on the next time. <clears throat>